Welcome to a special interview with Anglican TV Ministries. I have with me Dean Paul Donison, and we're going to talk about a recent announcement we posted here on Anglican.inc about your church becoming the pro cathedral for the Anglican Church in America. And cool, we need a cathedral. But you and I have known each other for many years, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about kind of the, the history here at Plano, a little bit about yourself, and what the future holds for the Pearl Cathedral. Um, first, welcome to the program, Paul. Thanks, Kevin. I've, uh, we've been friends over the years, and we've interacted at lots of different events, and so it's, uh, no, it's a joy to talk about this. We're excited about what this means uh, for us and for, we pray, the whole province. The last time you and I met in person, you were a Canadian. I still am Canadian. I still, I still am Canadian. I, I'm a Canadian with a green card in the U.S. and, God willing, in about two years we'll be applying for citizenship. Um, but no, it's 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 actually really interesting because we're. I was saying to my congregation on Sunday because we're now the provincial cathedral. It's not just America, but it also includes, therefore, with ACNA Canada. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I said it, it's a good thing we didn't forget Canada in the process. So though I've moved from Canada to Texas. Uh, now I've got a role provincially that actually touches Canada, which is great. Let's talk a little bit about the history of Plano. Uh, you're located in Texas. You left the Episcopal Church many years ago and mm -hmm. have, if you look at the history, been a part of many dioceses, not just here in America, but I think of Peru, Rwanda, some others, some others, uh, Church for the Sake of Others, and now you're going to be directly under Archbishop Foley. Uh, how does that all happen? Well, Kevin, as you know, with, with the formation of the province, um, with my predecessor, uh, Father David Roseberry, our founding, founding rector, you know, his visionary leadership was so critical during the formation of the ACNA, all the way back to Common Cause with events like A Place to Stand and the rest. Um, Christ Church not only was able to grow by God's grace to be the largest attended Episcopal Church in the country, um, but then being at the center of this Anglican realignment movement for biblically Orthodox Anglicans, you know, David had the vision to put that national or North American vision in front of the church uh, very near uh, to the beginning of our life together as a church. Um, even in the 90s, um, he was already thinking in terms of sort of a national presence and the rest. And so, no, we, we were part of that. This long predated me, of course, but uh, I was, I hate to say, but I was in high school when all that was going on. But, uh, but you know, as, as the whole province formed, uh, you know, just, you know, in the early 2000s, there was that question, like so many, of, of where were the lifeboats? And, um, you know, we went into Peru because we had a longstanding relationship with Bishop Godfrey, um, but then through EMEA, through to Pittsburgh, through to C4SO. But one thing that's important to, I think, point out, and people often don't know this, uh, that in each case, the vision always was very much at a larger provincial scale. I mean, regardless of where Christchurch would land canonically, there was always a commitment that we would continue to serve um, beyond even our own diocese. And so in many ways, this feels like the fulfillment of a trajectory or at least the next step in a trajectory that has begun all the way back to even the early 90s. Well, visiting Christ Church, it's an extremely large, beautiful church. It has uh, just been blessed with assets financially and architecturally and with the people and the ministries and missions you support. Um, you do bring a lot of influence in every diocese you've been in. Uh, does this hurt the diocese that you're leaving in, in any way, or what kind of relationships do you leave behind you? What's been great is that Bishop Todd Hunter has been the biggest support for me uh, over the last few years as we've tried to figure out what is our long-term calling from the Lord mm -hmm. here at Christ Church. Uh, it was three years ago that he and I, sitting together actually in the atrium at Regent College where I went to uh, seminary, we were there for an event, and we sat there together. Uh, for about three hours and actually started to map out what the Lord might be putting on my heart and on his heart about Christ Church in the long run. And, you know, again, in the one sense, wanting to see Dallas and North Texas be able to form, you know, uh, some kind of future identifiable district or diocese within the ACNA. That was part of the vision, but also 
recognizing that we have this larger provincial role. And that's very much where my heart and vision constantly is directed towards. So he's been hugely supportive from the beginning. In fact, in the meeting just a couple of weeks ago where we were finalizing with the Archbishop and several senior bishops, the, uh, the, the decision of Archbishop Foley Beach to uh, designate us as provincial cathedral. Uh, Bishop Todd was sitting right next to me throughout the entire meeting and supportive and prayerful. And so we've, we, we're we leaving c 4 in, 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 in a wonderfully supportive way. Um, we, we go with, with his blessing. Um, and because we're serving now the province, in some ways it doesn't feel like we're going in the sense that we're simply now going to serve c 4 like all the other dioceses in the ACNA um, at a provincial level now. Now we're getting into Anglican words, That's cathedral, right. pro cathedral. What people get? What's a pro cathedral? I've seen cathedrals. I've you know been around the world. New York has a nice one. The That's Episcopal right. Church has the National Cathedral. What's a pro cathedral? Yeah. Yeah, the, the pro-cathedral language has been a bit confusing for some. I think that's probably been, uh, you know, searched by more people. In fact, if you go on Wikipedia, I just found out last night, pro-cathedral now has an entry related to Christ Church Plano being the provincial pro-cathedral. So I thought, wow, you know, we're even being updated in the Wikipedia world. Uh, but pro-cathedral, uh, meaning provisional cathedral, is really what, what the language there is about, is, is, is different than a permanent cathedral in the sense of the more traditional historic cathedrals you think about in places like the Church of England. Um, the difference being that the rights and privileges of a pro-cathedral are identical to a regular fully permanent established cathedral. So the role and the function is exactly the same. The status and and, and the way that uh, they, they live out their lives is the same way. Although, well, the way they live out their lives may be slightly different because a permanent cathedral historically, and there's a lot of <laughs> information I'm now reading about this, but historic cathedrals in the sense of York or, or Canterbury others were actually over time built for the sole purpose of being a cathedral. Sometimes it was an existing parish that was turned into a cathedral, but eventually a permanent cathedral traditionally would have that sole job. They really don't have a parish in the same way, that their clergy or their staff almost become a college or a chapter of the cathedral that functions as what they'll sometimes say the bishop's household. And they exist to serve the diocese and to hold special events and arguably to guard the cathedral, the bishop's chair. Um, and usually also with a permanent cathedral, the bishop actually has his see there. He actually lives there and offices there and worships there. For the majority of us actually in the ACNA, our cathedrals are pro-cathedrals. Uh, I, I may be wrong. There may be some. No, uh, my previous diocese uh, has a pro cathedral, and basically, it, you got to really look into Wikipedia to get this. But pro cathedral right. just means you, this church still has some autonomy to it. That's exactly right. You know, and, and, and that's what was really important for our vestry. And I would say, not just for our vestry, but I think if we want to, I mean, our vestry wanted to make sure that its corporation bylaws continued mm -hmm. and our governance structure continued. We're obviously now under the Episcopal oversight of Archbishop Foley, but that our day-to-day -day governance life, you know, stays the same. That was very important for our vestry, obviously, and it would be for any other vestry looking at being elevated from a parish to being a, a, a pro-cathedral. But also, I think, Kevin, missionally, too, if we think about North American missional Anglicanism, that, you know, if we want to have cathedrals established as resource churches, hub churches, as kind of a mother church of a diocese, if we're in a more missional mindset, we've moved outside of this sort of establishment state church model that we came out of with, you know, Church of England, and even in the early days of the Episcopal Church, trying to sort of function like a kind of state church. Mm -hmm. I think now you wouldn't want to see, and this is my personal opinion, I don't think you'd want to see a ton of established cathedrals built. I mean, who would pay for them? Who would build this beautiful thing that didn't have an actual parish life attached to it. Instead, I think missionally what we need actually in our cathedrals are churches that can model for our diocese a healthy missional life. Like, hey, here's some resources that we're using right here in our mission field. We're, we're the tip of the spear, like every other church. We're actually on mission. And I think that for a missional Anglican mindset is is much help, more helpful than the traditional collegiate or chapter style of a cathedral. So maybe, and I'm just you know, suggesting that maybe pro-cathedral is kind of the way to go 
for missional Anglicans, Anglicans as we go forward um, in the future. Well, I think the ACNA, now being 12 years old, um, is maturing enough, still a little bit adolescent, to have its own cathedral. That's right. You know, and it, it, it's just that kind of that next step um, where you, we're going to have a, a place where we have a common uh, place that we call a cathedral. And mm -hmm. it's and, nice and, to have that designation. And our hope, Kevin, is that we can, through that, because we are maturing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like you say, we're 12 years old, we're, we're kind of middle schoolers. So there's some, there's some serious growth and, and things we're working through. But I mean, as we live into our, our maturity, I think one of the things the Archbishop is really um, excited about is us now as a provincial pro-cathedral being able to work with other existing diocesan cathedrals or pro-cathedrals and other jurisdictions that may not yet have any cathedrals or pro-cathedrals, but helping to them think through what that might look like. So we can actually build a common vision of what does a cathedral mean for this missional gospel urgent anglican church we're a part of well good that's, that's my next that that's my next question what is the role of uh plano pro cathedral the the um the role for the provincial pro cathedral will be uh on the one hand obviously being who we are i mean living into the uh in many ways i would say archbishop foley's kind of given name to what we've been from the beginning i mean we've we've always been this sort of national or you know i can't forget canada international um north american uh church and people have looked to us that way and now archbishop Foley's given a name to it and so in one sense we're just focusing on our day-to-day -day life you know we've got christ the king sunday this weekend we've got lessons and carols the next week and um you know we're, we're going to live into those but we recognize that um as well as continuing our day-to-day -day life that for us being able to be a model uh, for what gospel, urgent, um, you know, faithful, liturgically, musically excellent um, kind of worship and discipleship can look like by God's grace, that's what we hope to be able to model. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to be able to share resources. I mean, things we've developed like our Pray Daily um, literature, uh, where, which we've taken the 2019 prayer book and be able to put it into a sort of a smaller form, because I'm sure that like many, uh, like Christ Church Plano, many of our churches in the ACNA have a whole lot of uh, folks who are formerly Baptists or Methodists, and they're still getting used to the idea of prayer books. And so, you know, developing resources like that are uh, podcasts, Praying with the Saints, where we're actually looking at commemorations and telling those stories on podcast in a prayer format. Um, these are the kind of resources we hope we can share along with our live stream. I mean, we've got, we want to be able to put that live stream of our services uh, out there. It's I've been out there throughout, uh, you know, throughout COVID, but now in a more intentional way, it can hopefully be a blessing to, to, to North America. So that's, that's an example of sharing resources along with obviously hosting events like we have in the past and, you know, taking in guests, um, getting be behind provincial initiatives things like Matthew 25 and Always Forward are things that we're already committed to. Um, so I, that's a multiple way. But then I think also gathering together cathedral deans throughout the province and trying to begin establishing what does that cathedral role mean for our life together. Those are just a few of many ways I think that we can live into this, uh, this new uh, provincial pro-cathedral role. Next question. The world out there is going crazy. Yeah, it, I lived in the Northeast for a long time, and currently in Florida, you're in Texas, and you've seen the change. Mm -hmm. um, how does a, a large church like Plano address the cultural changes it sees, um, especially with your youth um, and younger folk who kind of feel comfortable in culture? That's right. Um, so what, what do we do? Well, the way we've lived into this, I mean, we've seen the last 18 months, two years of just increased polarization mm -hmm. um, with with so many, so much uh, cultural challenge around us and confusion within the church of how to respond. I mean, I'll say a couple of things. Number one, one thing we've tried to do is to be, uh, to live into the name of what we call our, our worship space, a, a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. we, we've tried again and again throughout COVID, throughout polarization, throughout all these challenges that 
when people come into our church, whether it's on a Sunday morning or they come into our church for a small group or a, another kind of event, that it would be a, a sanctuary, a place where they could experience the sacred space, the, the sacredness of God, the otherness of God, the holiness of God, um, while well, at the same time, I mean, the gospel is political. We're going to speak to issues. We're going to talk about how uh, how the gospel speaks with truth over the challenges in our culture, but not in a way that's sort of like a continuation. I've, I've said to my staff again and again, I don't want people to come into our ministries through all of this and feel like from the pulpit that we've got a sort of a continuation of a either a CNN or Fox News feed. You know, instead, people are being beat up by that out in the world. Let them come into the sacred space and hear the gospel. And fundamentally, the way we approach it is say, we believe that the gospel changes the world one life at a time, and one family at a time, and one community at a time. And so in so many ways, what we're trying to do through our teaching, we just finished a 10-week um, small group curriculum with Dr. Jonathan Bales, who is our uh, cathedral theologian. Um, he teaches a video, a 20-minute video teaching, a Bible study every week that we put out, and it's on our website, and all of our small groups go through it. And so hundreds and hundreds of our people have been going through 10 weeks on fruits of the Spirit recently, actually looking at what does it mean to live a Christian gospel life of virtue within a culture that is, is, is going crazy. Um, how do we actually model a different kind of living so the world pays attention to us? Um, and so that's, I think, a big way that we're, we're trying to do is be, be decidedly uh, church. Uh, we're, we're, we're not afraid of being churchy. We, want, we think that people want church and they want an experience of the sacred. Um, and we really want them to be filled with the gospel. I mean, I'll put it this way, Kevin. I, I don't know if I'm answering your question well, but every Sunday recently when I get up to preach, I pray this prayer. I say, oh, Lord, by your spirit, Father, by your spirit, would you so fill my mouth with the gospel so that our ears would be filled with the gospel so that our lives would be conformed to the gospel so that your world would be filled with a gospel people. That's, I think, summarizes the way we think that the church uh, responds to these cultural challenges, is the gospel transforming us individually, person by person, family by family, community by community. Yeah, I don't wake up anxious when I see that culture is divided against itself. I do wake up a little anxious when I see the church divided against itself. Yeah, that's right. And you know, we've seen that certainly in the Episcopal Church before us. We see it once uh, and now again here in the ACNA. We see it globally in, in all the denominations. And it's hard to watch because it, the second we become polarized, we lose focus on that's right. the main thing. That's right. And so, you know. Well, and I think, Kevin, too, that's, that's one of the things that I think was exciting about this development for us. I mean, um, as I've shared with you before, I mean, like I said, we've been at many conferences and gatherings mm -hmm. together. But I mean, as we all share our stories of coming into the ACNA, uh, I mean, I remember, you know, getting kicked out of a rectory back in Canada, back in Ottawa, yeah. um, with a three-month-old baby for standing with the gospel. I mean, th 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 that was a, an inflection point in my life. And I remember, therefore, coming to the ACNA totally committed to this gospel movement. And I still am. And I think in many ways, in, in the face of some of the polarization within the ACNA even, my hope is that this kind of announcement of us now, you know, by, by whatever measure, one of the largest, I don't know if we're still the largest church, but one of the largest churches in the ACNA, really intentionally hitching itself to the ACNA, hitching ourselves to the Archbishop. Hopefully that's an, a word of encouragement because it's certainly where my heart is. I mean, mm -hmm. I am absolutely committed to this gospel movement of what God is doing in the ACNA. And I hope that this announcement maybe can cut through some of that polarization and division, because if more of us could agree on, on, on how much we're united and what we do together share as ACNA churches and clergy and congregants, um, I think some of these issues that are, are big and important, they may be able to take the appropriate second seat and recognize that actually we have a wonderfully unified, or we can have a wonderfully unified gospel movement here in the ACNA. And I, I'm hoping that this announcement of this provincial cathedral can encourage that, because certainly that's where my heart is, and I know that that's where the heart of my people are at. Okay, next question, last question. Yeah. All right, getting you back to work. You yeah. had a big job. 
uh, and, and I'm not expecting Archbishop to Foley to call you and say, I don't like the color in the narthex. Can you paint it? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you have your own autonomy. You're autonomous. That's awesome. I, my question is, Mark, in, in 10 years, what do you expect uh, Church Plano, Pro Cathedral Plano to look like? Yeah, my hope is I look down the down the road. I mean, I and I and I do pray that I'm I'm healthy and I mean I still I still you know I'm 44, so I I hope I got another good 20 25 years uh, of gas in the tank. So as I look over the next 10 years and beyond, um, God willing, keep me keep me healthy. Um, that I think that where I look down the road, I see the pro cathedral. Uh, Christchurch Plano being able to continue to thrive and flourish. I mean, we're we're becoming more and more by the day uh, more multi-ethnic because of the way that our environment around us is changing here. We've got so many more South Asian and Southeast Asian uh, families moving into the area, and mm -hmm. so it's really encouraging to see that. Um, so, sort of a Revelation seven nine vision of what the church can be. I think you know, you go down ten years, we're going to be God willing, much more of that picture of a multi-ethnic church. Um, and I think also we're going to be continuing to do the work we've been seeking to do uh, over the last few years is continue to plant churches throughout the uh, the Dallas Metroplex. And this is, as many people know, the fastest growing or one of the fastest growing Metroplexes. Um, now, I'm going to speak like a Texan. This is the fastest growing Metroplex <laughs> in the country. And, and, you know, the incredible opportunities for church planting and collaboration, we're going to continue. So I hope that maybe in 10 years we'll actually see a diocese here in, in uh, Northeast Texas that will have formed in the ACNA that we could be a part of while still being the provincial cathedral. Um, and I think as well, maybe as a province, uh, by that point, 10 years from now, we'll uh, be under a, a, another archbishop, um, that we will have had a much greater sense of what it means uh, for this cathedral to serve um, the broader ACNA. I hope we'll have hosted some amazing events. I hope that we'll have reestablished maybe some annual conferences, you know, maybe we could take on where mere Anglicanism left off and we could sure. pick that up again as the yeah. provincial cathedral. Yeah. Those are the kind of things I'm hoping. I'm hoping that across across North America, throughout the ACNA, that people would know that we are a, uh, a resource church uh, that is, is committed to this gospel movement here in North America. I want to thank you for your time. And I, I want to... You know, reintroduce Anglican interviews, and this is how they're conducted. Uh, when I have time, and when a a, a wonderful uh, a subject has time to sit down with me, we can do these. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I'm Paul Donison, and you've been watching a special Anglican TV interview. <laughs> <laughs>